We are being spun in a web of lies, and we are caught up in this web. But don't worry. People will tell you over and over again, oh, we've survived worse. No, we haven't. I spoke to Overstock.com CEO and founder Patrick Byrne, who says he believes Goldman Sachs is a criminal organization. I want you to take a look. This is as if we bailed out the Corleone family and then they turn around two quarters later and have a record quarter. Uh, the, uh, there, there's a writer at the Rolling Stone, Matthew Taibbi, who's written some beautiful, some of the best coverage of this financial calamity is from Matthew Taibbi at the Rolling Stone. And he has summarized this all in one sentence. This is rich bankers bailing out rich bankers on your credit card. That's I, it the, is, the simple I, you know, summary. Patrick, I don't know. Um... I think you would agree with me that Wall Street owns our government. I mean, it yeah, is. It... Go ahead. Oh, absolutely. There's economists have a term for it. It's called regulatory capture. Society sets up regulators to protect us from certain industries like Wall Street, but often those regulators come under the thumb of the industry, and then they're called a captured regulator. Well, Wall Street has captured the institutions that are supposed to have protected our country from Wall Street. They've just become wholly owned subsidiaries. It, it, In fact, so, there's a, it, I, I'm sorry, go ahead. Do, Please, do you think ahead. this is the same thing? Because I said, I think it was on last night's program, that I think this is just, we, we have merged our government and these gigantic corporations have merged and the framework now is if you're not in one of these gigantic corporations forget about it jack it's called an oligarchy there's actually a, an economist at mit named simon johnson who was the chief economist of the imf he's been giving and this guy is this guy, he's been giving some wonderful lectures on this where he says this is just like the imf what we're facing in this country is like when the imf went into argentina indonesia russia what you have is an oligarchy, a group of powerful folks who basically hijack the government. And, they, and they, they get out of control, they make a lot of money for a while, they get over leveraged, then it collapses. And he says his job at the IMF was to go into places like Indonesia, and they always end up with a new leader who's a bold, young visionary that everybody loves. But the IMF's job is to go in and look them squarely in the face and say, is this guy... Is he happy talk or is he willing to really stand up and do the things that you have to do to break the back of the oligarchy? Well, the United States, and this is, the, this, is this economist Simon Johnson, he says, look, that's exactly the situation you're in here. And th that's exactly the situation we're in. It transcends party politics. We have an oligarchy who has captured Washington, D.C. And they have just prevented, they manufactured this, not deliberately, it went much farther, but yeah. they, they manufactured the loopholes that let this happen, mm -hmm. and they're doing everything they can do to keep those loopholes from being closed. How come I'm not hearing about this on, on shows? Because <clears throat> the media is largely captured, too. The New York financial press has become, un, has become un, to an unsavory degree, close to the financial community on whom it reports. So they will not report the kind of news and evidence. You only see it at the fringes, but from very respectable Man. people like William Black, Simon Johnson, you now. It's great. It's I mean, great I, that the message is breaking through the, the smoke screen. Uh, this is, how, you know, I, 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 I wonder if it's good or if I'm suddenly on a really dangerous boat to hell. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, don't worry. It's just that everybody else won't talk about it because, you know, they're the most powerful people in the world. Okay. Um, thank you so much. Let me go to uh, Ron Paul now. He's the uh, congressman from uh, Texas. Congressman, at the, you know, I, I draw this spider web up here and I see it. And, and I think to myself, at the center of this really is the Fed. They are, they're in this thing all the way around. And yet, you want to talk about powerful people, you've got a majority of congressmen that are willing to say, we need to open up the books of the Fed. You can't even get this thing brought to the floor now. Why is that? Well, so far we haven't been able to. We have 273, which includes almost 90 Democrats, so the large majority of the congressmen want it. They don't want it because they really understand the issue and, uh, and, and they're not motivated by philosophy as much as the fact that this has struck a chord with the American people and the American people are demanding uh, more uh, transparency. So I think this is very good. 
Now, I think uh, we had the first demonstration last week when Jim DeMent tried to bring it up in the Senate. Even though he was doing exactly what they had done four times on that same bill, they ruled him out of order and said, well, you're not following the rules. That means the information is, is coming up from above and on down. That means from the administration and leadership, both Republicans so, and Democrats. So, who so, is, uh, they, so they who's blocking it? Can you name names? Who's blocking it? Well, I don't know the individual, but I, I would know I would know one thing. If Obama wanted change and change of this system, at least exposure, uh, he could do something. But, you know, he got nearly a million dollars from Goldman Sachs. So so we don't expect anything from the administration. The same people, you know, with this to me is a perfect example of my argument that I've made. And I think you gen generally agree with it. There's not a whole lot of difference between the two parties. No. You know, they're owned by the same people. You take this Goldman Sachs issue. What, wouldn't it be revealed? if we were able to get the transcripts and all the agreements and discussion that all Treasury and all Federal Reserve officials have had with Goldman Sachs. I mean, that would be a revelation. But, boy, they're hysterical when they think we're coming down close to saying that we might be able to open up the books. I find got some information the other day that during uh, another crisis in, in Central America, the banks were in trouble, and our Fed went to the IMF and told the IMF to pay the interest to the banks. I mean, that's how corrupt it is. And the whole thing is, is as this system continues to falter, they're not going to give up. They're going to move all these shenanigans over to the IMF. They're going to have a world organization. So the powerful elite then will have a world currency. That's what they're being uh, plan, planning for right now. So uh, we, we as a people really have to wake up. My effort is exposing the Fed, opening up How the much? books. The American people want it, and we have both Republicans and Democrats demanding it. But you made the right point. How are we going to? And get the leadership to do what the American people are demanding. How much time do we have, Ron? How much time okay. do we have to, to wake up? Um, that, that is hard to say. Timing is really tough in Austrian economics. We know what the inevitable outcome will be. But I, I would guess it's just a few more years. I would think the handwriting will be clearly on the wall before Obama finishes his first okay. term, which means the next shoe is the crisis in the dollar, the value of the dollar, not just the financial system. Okay. We will see high, high inflation rates soon. Okay. Uh, Congressman Ron Paul, thank you very much, sir.